Let's give this a shot. We're on a journey, looking back on the things that we've taken for granted. Good morning, everybody. So I apologize in advance for the state of my kitchen. I am in full swing preparation for Nikki's baby shower. <laughs> doing a Harry Potter themed baby shower and I'm doing a lot of homemade crafts to bring the cost of decorations down. So uh, this is just kind of what things are going to look like for the next three weeks or so. So anyway, um, it is now Tuesday. I know I normally do my dose on Monday. Yesterday was a really weird day. Um, I've been having a little bit of car trouble with my RAV4 and I needed to take it into the dealer yesterday to do a transmission flush. Um, and it is now running a billion times better, but you can tell how much a creature of habit and routine I am because normally I would do my dose in the morning on Monday. And because I had to get up and run out the door first thing in the morning, I completely forgot to do my dose yesterday. So here we are on Tuesday. Last night I was looking at everything like it was a snack and I could not figure out why. Now I know. I woke up this morning and was like, I didn't do my dose yesterday. Who am I? It's been 24 weeks of this. I should know that that's a thing that needs to happen by now. However, what makes this week different than every other week is that we are starting our semaglutide compound this week. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's just a teeny tiny little pill. So I will not need to be doing the subcutaneous injections from here on out. If you are here wanting to know how to do the subcutaneous injection, I have 24 weeks of videos prior to this where I kind of talk you through it and you see me giving myself the dose. Um, but this one is just a rapid dissolve sublingual tablet. I sure hope it doesn't taste awful. Um, sorry, that's my air fryer. Um, it is instead of a 2.4 milligram, like the subcutaneous injection, it's a 2.8 milligram. Um, if you saw my video from Wednesday, you'll already know this. If you haven't, please feel free to click this link here. I'm going to give a lot more information about the compound, why I switched, all of those things. So let's give this a shot. It's probably not too bad. It's getting real bad. <clears throat> I kind of left my tongue locked down on the tablet while I took that drink, but I needed something to clear it out because for some reason it almost tastes a little like bile and it's making me want to puke making me want to vomit it's burning really bad like really bad i prefer the injection so there's still more tablet under there never had a rapid dissolve pill take that long. Just a little bit of it under there. So, unfortunately, I bought three months of this. <laughs> and um, so I've got 11 more doses like that to take. And I got to tell you, I'm not looking forward to that at all. Give me just a second. I need to eat something to try and get the flavor out of my mouth. So, that was not pleasant. Um, for those of you who have done a rapid dissolve sublingual, Please tell me your experience with it because that compound 
Well, that was not pleasant at all. Um, it started out almost tasting sweet. Um, hi, buddy. Anyway, it started out almost tasting sweet, and then it got intensely burny. Like, my mouth almost feels slightly numb. But the flavor, like I said, is kind of reminiscent to bile. Like, if you've ever, like, burped up bile into your mouth, like, that's kind of what it feels like. And the skin underneath my tongue is, like, raw. Like, it's kind of tore up, like, after you eat Captain Crunch. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to have to contact Stonegate and ask them if that's normal. Because... That was not pleasant. I don't know if I can do that for three months. But I don't know that I'm going to necessarily have a choice because I already paid for these and they already delivered them to me. And... I don't know that they're necessarily going to be willing to take these back in deference to a subcutaneous injection. Wow, that was intense. Well, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it'll get easier. Anyway. So this week. I still have. I've got. Basically I'm going to be doing a ton of. Crafting and stuff to get ready for a Nikki shower. So. That's really kind of where most of my focus is. Aside from editing and posting videos. So. I'm going to eat my breakfast. Mm. If you didn't see last week's cooking video, you need to make this quiche. Oh, so good. I had, it makes six slices, so I had one slice extra that I froze, and that's what I'm eating for breakfast today. So, definitely make this. Eat it. It's delicious. Not horribly difficult. Especially when you use a store-bought crust. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, I'm going to call it. Anyway, I hope y'all are having an awesome week. I will continue to keep you posted to let you know how my body does with this compound as opposed to the WeGoBe shots themselves. Hey, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update. <clears throat> it's been a couple of minutes since I took the Rapid Dissolve and I'm, I've got like several spots under my tongue where it feels like there's almost a blister starting to form and it's really raw and like just eating cantaloupe which is not I mean cantaloupe is not acidic it's burning on the bottom of my tongue so I called the pharmacy and I spoke with Renee <clears throat> down at Stonegate and he said that basically the way that the tablet works is that it's pulling the saliva from your mouth in order to break it down and then get absorbed into your body but if you don't have enough saliva in your mouth either from being dehydrated or maybe you just don't produce a lot of saliva um, then it will start pulling moisture from the actual tissue itself, which this does feel like if you've ever had like a canker sore and you put salt on it, you know what your skin feels like after that. That's kind of what this feels like, only burnier. <laughs> I don't know. I know that's not a word, but anyway, I told him I was really concerned because I bought three months worth of this stuff just because I wanted to make sure I had it because they were talking about how, you know, semaglutide is hard to keep. And now that people are starting to hear about compounds, like it's just really, really popular and they can't even keep it on the shelf. So I bought three months worth to make sure that I didn't run out. But if it's going to be like this every time, like, I don't know, I don't know if I can handle three months of that. <laughs> and he was like, if, if you continue have to have the problem, just contact us. We'll make it right. We'll switch you back to the injectable, whatever we need to do, it'll be fine. So I'm, I mean, this pharmacy continues to just be amazing. Like there's no way a Walmart pharmacy would be like, yeah, well, you're tough luck. You paid for it. You bought it. You got it. That's, you know, <laughs> but, um, he did give me a tip. He said that next time I do it to take a little sip of water and leave like a puddle of water underneath my tongue to put the semaglutide in so that it has that moisture to reach and break down so that it can sit under my tongue. He said, ideally they want it to kind of sit under your tongue for at least a minute or so. And I mean, it took it took several minutes for that to break down. So um, it's just, that's probably why I was having such a hard time. It just wasn't enough moisture in my mouth. So if you're getting ready to do a compound and you got a rapid dissolve sublingual, make sure you take a little sip of water and leave some water underneath your tongue because otherwise you could have this issue. <laughs> I am a little bit dehydrated because I didn't drink enough water yesterday with all the running around I was doing. That's a problem that I have that we've talked about before. So anyway, I just want to come on and tell you because I 
I know there's a good chance that I would forget. So, <laughs> all right. I hope you're having a good day. Oh, sparkly. Make the wands, she said. It'll be fun, she said. Remind me again why I thought this was a good idea. All right, it's grocery haul time. So, got some romaine hearts for some salads this week, and I bought these frozen avocado chunks because I keep throwing away pieces of avocado because I end up not eating the whole thing. So we're going to see how these chunks work out. Um, per pound, they were less expensive, but it was a bigger investment up front. So we'll see if it works out. I may never buy them again. Who knows? Uh, I also got some eggs. They were out of the one dozen packages. So I got 18, which is way more than I need, but eggs last a while. I uh, got some green onions, some cauliflower, and some more jasmine rice because we keep running low. Um, I picked up some of this Surly Delightful Bread. I really wanted the white because I'm going to be doing some eggs and sausage and toast this week, but they didn't have it, so we got the multigrain. And then I'm going to try these La Banderita carb counter tortillas. They're bigger than the HEB ones that I and the Mission ones that I normally buy, and they're still only 45 calories. They feel really soft, and I've heard good things about them, so we're going to try them out and see how they are. Uh, my husband wanted some cheese. I uh, picked up some more drumsticks. And, of course, the obligatory Ben & Jerry's chocolate chip cookie dough for my weekly calorie bomb. I will put the total up here. And that, as they say, is that. All right, just taking a look at next week's menu. Um, we're probably not going to have a cooking video next week because I've either already given videos on what I'm making or it's literally just like throwing together taco meat. So I don't feel like that would be very exciting. Um, but we're gonna be doing egg, sausage, and toast for breakfast. I still have leftovers to get through for lunches. And then um, we'll be doing finishing off the chicken and dumplings that I made last week, and then also tacos we're gonna be making for the rest of the week. So that is it. Hey guys, so we made it to the end of week one on our semaglutide compound. As usual, just wanna go through non-scale victories, side effects, and my results for the week. Um, so, um, side effects this week, honestly, there wasn't really anything new. I was a little bit nervous with us moving to the compound that maybe I would experience some things that I hadn't. Um, other than on Monday of this week, I had some, some kind of painful diarrhea, but honestly, I'm pretty sure that was my own fault. Uh, I ended up having an excess of calories on Sunday and I tried to get as close to finishing them as I could. And I think that my body was revolting. So <laughs> I think I've kind of gotten to the point now where I think it's just better that if I'm not, you know, if I'm short on my calories by the end of the day on Sunday, I'm just going to be short because the few times that I've tried to kind of catch up at the end, I've always regretted it the next day. So um, anyway, uh, the other thing I had, um, the, the blisters that I was telling you guys about on the bottom of my tongue, those continued to get worse throughout the week. It kind of turned into that white blistery weird thing um, that you see again I likened it to like if you've ever gotten a canker sore and you put salt on it and it just kind of pulls all the moisture out of your tissue that's exactly what it was like um, but by the end of the week all the skin had fallen off and it was fine so it feels fine now um, it was just again me not knowing and putting it directly on the tissue underneath my tongue without having a little bit of moisture there so we'll try that this week and see if that makes a difference um, in regards to the the compound I still felt the full effects the same as we go eat. Um, once I remembered to take it on Tuesday, I think I told you guys by Monday night, I was starving. I was wanting to eat everything in sight and I couldn't figure out why until I realized that on Tuesday that I hadn't taken the compound on Monday like I normally would. So once I took it on Tuesday, then I was, you know, I was feeling better. Um, uh, not a ton of non-scale victories that I really noticed this week. The one big one was that um, we had a friend that had kind of a weekend long birthday celebration and Friday night we went and hung out at their house and we were there until late in the evening and they as with all parties had a bunch of snack foods out like chips and crackers and cheese and just a bunch of things that normally like in the past I would have just sat in the kitchen and just grazed like all night long um, but we didn't get there until well after 9 p.m. so we I try not to eat after 9 o'clock at night and I did not snack while I was there so looking back to you know, almost six months ago when this started, that definitely would not have been a thing for me. I would have sat and snacked all night long for no reason. <laughs> so, um, let's get to our results this week. Um, oh, I'm sorry. 
I forgot to mention, I think. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that happened was that my cycle, I'm sorry, you guys, I don't know what's going on. It's like, I'm <clears throat> pollen count is really high in our area right now. And this happens every once in a while where I feel like I'm like trying to breathe ammonia. <laughs> this has been since way before Adobe. we go. <clears throat> sorry about that. That was really bad. It's still kind of here. So just bear with me if you hear me talking kind of weird. Anyway, my cycle was a full six days late. Um, I started the night before I weighed in. And that's, I think there's only been one time since I started WeGoBe that my cycle has been later than that. But this was definitely like seriously delayed, um, which, you know, could have been the stress on my body from switching to the compound. It could have been any number of things, who knows. Um, but that has happened infrequently since I started WeGoBe, but I've never really had a very regular cycle. so. It is what it is. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the results. Um, so unfortunately, this week when I stepped on the scale, I had actually gained 1.2 pounds, which is the most that I have gained since starting WeGoBe. Even the week that I went to California, I didn't gain that much. Um, it's kind of difficult for me to say that it was the that the compound was responsible for that because there were so many things that happened this week. Um, I I took the compound a day late. I my cycle was six days late and starting. Um, my schedule was kind of a little bit all over the place this week. I did stay underneath my calories and I, in fact, I was actually way under on my calories most of this week because my appetite just was not there. Um, so that could have been it that I wasn't eating enough. Um, but when I looked at the body fat percentage portion of my scale, uh, it actually said that I lost 1.1 pounds of fat. So if the body fat percentage part of the scale is to be believed, I still lost 1.1 pounds of fat, even though I gained 1.2 pounds. So who knows? Um, it could be that my body is just retaining water because my cycle was so late. Like I said, I didn't start until like the night before I did my weigh-in. So I don't, I don't know. This was also an extremely heavy period for me. Um, I've always had, like I've been tested for endometriosis multiple times. Um, it's always negative, but I, I, I have had heavy periods in the past and extremely painful ones, but this was the worst one I've had in a very, very long time. And it was extremely long. I'm sure part of that had to do with the fact that it was delayed by almost a full week. Um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, it is very disappointing um, and it's hard to not make the jump to the fact that it, it's the compound that did this because I know there are so many other things that could have contributed to that. It's also where I'm at in my journey. Um, you know, I'm almost six months in to this, and given that I'm that that far in, and that I've you know lost steadily this whole time, I'm bound to reach a point where my body tries to reach you know homeostasis. Our bodies like to stay in homeostasis. So because I've been losing consistently throughout this entire journey, it's possible that my body's just reaching a point where it's like, no, I don't want to give it up. So I'm doing my best to stay positive. We'll see what happens next week, and. I think that's it for now. So thanks again for all of the support, you guys. I appreciate you. For everybody that's new, welcome. Um, if you, I know there are a lot of people that watch my videos that are not subscribed. So if that's you, please feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my content. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.